welcome to Portsmouth and Gosport History Group live stream. Sunday live stream, here we are again. So if you you are listening in, if you're watching in and you've got any questions, pop them in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer them. If we can't answer them, we'll go away, we'll find the answers and we'll come back, possibly, maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring our chairman in and, uh, and he can have a bit of a chat with us. So good evening, Hello, William. Tim. How are you Not doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. How have you been? Good. I've been really busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell, to tell me about it. We, um, we've just been up to um, Amsbury yesterday to pick up some cool new finds from Wessex Archaeology, which we're very uh, excited to tell you about. But once you pull James in, we can have a little bit of a chat about that, no doubt. But yep. so, yeah, so we've been quite busy all around, really. Excellent. So, look. <laughs> we go big. <laughs> oh, we go small. Oh, let's go small. There you go. <laughs> Got all the toys going tonight. So, um, what are we doing? What we're we going to chat about tonight? Let's. Um, where we've got? What we've got? What we've got? Um, we're talking what? about um, Daedalus during World War Two and the Naval Air Squadrons. Ah, yes. I think we've got a presentation coming on in a bit for that. That's, uh, oh, we have. we have, we have, what's this? Good evening. Hello. Good evening. How are you, Lana? How have you been? I bet you've been dying to get back to us since three weeks ago now. <laughs> we missed that one because of Mother's Day, but we're eager oh. to get back. And you, last last week, you asked to do South Sea. Um, and we are currently working on that. So probably in a couple of weeks' time. When it's, next, when it's next fortnight, we have something for yeah. South Sea. But tonight we have something even better, which is Daedalus. Would you like to join in? Do you have the facilities to be able to come and join us, Leah? <laughs> so, while we're waiting for her to make her mind up, mm, <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's bring in James. Uh, there you go. Evening, James. How are you doing? I'm all right. How's it going with you? It's going all right. So, uh, so we're just saying that we've been really, really busy just lately. Um, oh, hang on. Let's see what she says. Dun, dun, dun. I'm sad now. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the South Sea. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the South you Sea. Have to wait then. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, thanks for James, joining us. Um, yeah, so tell us all about yesterday. You had a little soiree out up to Amesbury. And what do you manage to pick up from there? Do you want to move the mic closer to yeah. it? Oh, we picked up quite a lot of stuff, actually. Um, I think we came back with, was it nine boxes? Yeah. William? Um, no, yeah, I, th I think it's around about ten, nine boxes, yeah. Really stacked yeah. the to thrill <laughs> full of all uh, glass bottles ceramic ware all of it but well everything was from the dredge of the dockyard uh, harbour ready for the carriers coming in took part in 19 sorry not 9 2014 <laughs> back. Yeah. I mean um, I actually remember when they were doing it because as, as everybody knows because I keep talking about it my nan she lives down um, down pretty hard so we have a good view of the harbour, and we used to see the dredging ships go past virtually daily. They were at it for, well, for since 2014 to 2017. So they found quite a lot, didn't they, James? And when we went up there yesterday, um, we were just shocked at how much they had found. And um, some of the items, I mean, what was that um, piece of wood that you caught your eye? Which one? There was lots of it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, yeah, there, there, there was quite a lot of um, parts of a hull there, hmm. which was rather intriguing because it's possibly a uh, either an MTB or an MGB vessel. Oh, uh, Mortrois torpedo boat and Mortrois gunboat. It's that sort of um, patterning, but I've actually hmm. put photos on the uh, on Facebook sites, Spitfires of the Sea. And I've asked there, and 
some of them are saying that it's possibly not necessarily MGB or MTB, but possibly related in some form. Because there were quite a few okay. different vessels had similar construction methods during the Second World War and around that period. And so of course, um, and of course, we picked up a few other bits possibly relating to the, um, the Spitfires of the Sea. So, and the the window, have you managed to find out anything about that so far? Not yet. No, I haven't even looked at it to be honest. I've had so much there. <laughs> so, yeah, the ca the cannonball is one that's that's rather intrigued me because I've had a look at possible dating, but of course, you can't really identify yeah. date wise a piece of metal in, in itself without markings on it. But from mm. what I've been able to gather from the web so far is that that size and that weight, which is nine pounder, sorry, 11 pounder, dates from about mid 1600s. So it's literally any time mm, from that right. up until ballistic weapons as we, as in the shells we now know. So you've got a fair bit of time. Mm. So if it I mean, does date, 1600s it'll be a nice little oh, artifact for us yeah definitely and i mean i mean and that's the thing i personally like about history that sometimes it, it's all very good having dates on things but sometimes it's the mystery of not knowing when it was actually made or what it could have been used for so i think that's just another mystery around it and it's it's great i mean um wessex like would you contact us a few months back about um you know picking up some of these items for our handling displays so that we can get children to get their memories, well, not memories, to get their thoughts flowing and just see what they think items are. And, you know, we came up with an idea yesterday. We could possibly magnet some of the, um, the bottles back together so that they can build it, obviously, the better types of broken bottles. So I think it's, it's a great way to start our handling collection. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look into that, that. Um, idea. I don't know if it'll work so easily, but I can, I can have a look. Hmm. Must so, be an idea. Do with those sort of things. So um, you guys had a busy old day yesterday, then? Yeah, we had a we had a few hours <laughs> out in the mid out in the middle of the lovely Wiltshire countryside. Mm. Excellent. It was nice. So, do we want to start getting into the uh, into this little presentation? Well, I think that's why everyone else is waiting here to, to view it, isn't it? I don't. I, don't, I think they want to hear us talking about. How many people Amsbury. are on this um, As far as I can see, Nan's very lucky to live there. <laughs> love it. Look, there you go. I, I love it when people join in like this. So, if you've got any questions, do ask away. And while you're at it, just click the like button. That's all you ask you to, to give a little click on the like button because it all helps out at the end of the day. So without too much further ado, we'll pull up the uh, the presentation and James uh, is going to tell us all about the presentation. You'll have to, you'll have to excuse a bit because this was literally thrown together today. So it's from information I've been, been able to gather over the last couple of years. So... It's not good enough, James. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> it does take a lot unfortunately to do all this stuff okay so let's delve into it then do you know right first one there you go okay we've got the information some information up there which is that the the actual air, air, air station as such uh started as a Royal naval air service looking at the training and bringing into, into the service as a whole the flying boats, such as the um, Warus, Otter, and some of the other various types of aircraft. We also remember that uh, Sopwith also had some uh, flying boats during the period of the time. So we've got quite a few different ones that were brought into the and trained up some of the young people who would... So we've got that were into the, um... Seems about a bit of echo there. You still there, James? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still here. Yeah, it does seem to have a bit, a bit of echo this there for some reason. Oh, well. Um, for sure. Yeah. Well, the, the, the pictures you got there 
the one at the top there, the more brown uh, sepia type looking one, is just after they built the hangers there. And the hangers are basically for uh, maintenance, for launching, for the ease of storage of the items. When you think about an aircraft, you don't want it to be sat outside all the time. You want it to be undercover, to be protected from the elements as much as possible because they're fairly fragile items. And that's what the air station was placed there on where, the, where, where we presently have the slipway down at Lee there. And oh, some, yeah. of the buildings, some of the buildings which are there were built up, are presently built upon the original building platforms. So you've got a fairly large area when you look at all that, all different types of aircraft that would have been there during that time. So that's, that's, a, that's a fair bit. Well, during um, subsequent years, the RAF took it over, unfortunately. <laughs> and um, they uh, amalgamated the RNAS, which was as was the Royal Naval Air Service, and the Flying Arm and the Royal Flying Corps, which were stationed in the area. And they, also, they were also at uh, RAF Gosport during the time as well. So they took over the area of, of the airfield as it would eventually become. And during that time as well, the Fleet Air Arm became um, part of the military as a whole because, of course, the Navy wanted their own bit of Air Force and um, wanted to take it back from the RAF. You can't blame them. Um, <laughs> my boys would, have to, would, like, would like to just be in their, in their hotels all the time after the time. So that's not too bad. Um, <laughs> and also, when you when you think about it all as well, you're talking about the RAF. They are predominantly over land, and they have the luxury of a big airfield to land back onto. Whereas the Navy had, well, they would have to land on water. So it's more specialised within its own its own field. So that's what happened there. As um, as it progressed, in 1931, the first air airstrip uh, came into being and the RAF became established there as, uh, as the RAF coastal area. So it got a large expansion of the use of the area. And when you go down there at the moment, you look at the predominant um, direction of the airflow and it is literally from the air, from the water. So it's yeah. you've got quite a lot of uh, help there to get the aircraft off the ground, and also, no, was, and no, also as, as 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 was encountered um, mm -hmm. when a, a Barracuda went down after the Second World War, you had you had the water at the end for soft landing if the engine didn't meet its expectations. Yeah, uh, I suppose because from these dates here you can see how transformed it's become over a very short period of time. I mean, you're looking really from the First World War to the Second World War. And, you know, the great thing about Davos now is that you can still see its past. You can see where it was formed back in um, 19, uh, 1918, was it? 1917. And, you know, it goes back. You know, it, its history is so unique. And yes. what I like about it is, is the fact that they used to take off from the slipway there and not many people know about that. They imagine Daedalus as being, as you as you know, uh, a wartime base during the Second World War. And I think sometimes its pre-existing history gets forgotten a little bit. You find that with quite a few of these different places, because quite quite a few of the airfields, as in public airfields, just like Heathrow, that was was previously an RAF base, which then became the um, as it as it now was the airport. But people mm. don't realise it, but it had history in its past. And, well, that's just, that's the sort of thing we, have, we, we want to investigate and we want people to realise and learn from. So that's what happened. But then at the, in the 1930s, when the um, Fleet Air Arm took more control of the area, it became a training base. And for trials, communi communications, refreshers, conversions, because we... You could think not all aircraft had the same configuration of the controls, as as you would have now. Most aircraft have the same layout of, of things. During that time, 
if you came down the one aircraft and you had to go and use another type of aircraft for another purpose, you know, you, you haven't got a clue what after stuff is on it. And so that's what the um, 781 squadron was put in place for. And as got on there, you've got evaluations and trials. Now, there were so many different types of aircraft coming out during the, during the sec, or prior to the Second World War and during the Second World War itself. They wanted to see which were the best for the different uses. So you could have an aircraft come in, the manufacturer could say, it's an ideal fighter. The uh, War Department could come along and say, no, we'll just go and evaluate it first, make sure it's, it's up to scratch. It may not be any good for for uh, for the purpose it was originally designed for. Let's use it for this one instead. And this one's more suitable. And that's where the evaluation was for. So that's the sort of thing that would happen. So you've got there that they, they, they use the swordfish. And the swordfish you could use as a seaplane as well with floats on. You could be converted for that purpose. So you've got, therefore, you've still got the slipway being used for aircraft in that way. You've got, you've got the Warus. That was predominantly, it could land on land, but it was a seaplane. The Fulmer, now that is a strange looking aircraft itself. I've not got a picture of it here, unfortunately. But you've got on there, you've got the Warus on the slipway, actually at, the, at, at Lee there. And right next to it there, you've also got a Proctor. Proctor was a very strange aircraft itself, but that was more of an aircraft they used for training for communications for for the radio operators. So therefore, they would have training of all different types of functions. So it became a major establishment in Lee. So you then got the um, the area becomes more predominantly militarized, which then they get the families in, you then get the civilians in. Same as we were talking about a couple of weeks back in that in Gosport in Rauna, it's uh, it was civilian first of all, then the military came in, built the forts, civilian population expanded and it carried on from there onwards until where we are now. Same sort of thing happened in Lee. And until it is now, the, the airstrip is still there. It's still predominantly being used now by civilian We've got in quite a lot of maintenance works going on there. It's quite a bit of manufacturing going on there, which is employing quite a few of the people around there. So we're bringing in quite a lot of industry within the area as well, as well as obviously as it was at the time, which was um, in, um, water departments. Now off of Lee Beach, we had the um, torpedo bombers. They did training off of it. But they also used a strip, which is up at Halsey Island, around where um, Porchester is. There's a one mile, effectively a big long um, swimming pool. And they would actually fire torpedoes along there to say, check whether they were actually feasible. And went from there. Now, during the Second World War, we had 30 five different squadrons there. On top of that, we also had, toward the end, toward the invasion, the Normandy invasion, we had 10 different other squadrons come in there, including US, Canadian, and of course, our own British. And there, they used um, Mustangs, they use typhoons and spitfires predominantly. So you've got quite a lot of stuff that went on, went on, went on during that period of the time. So there's, during the war itself, you've got 35 squadrons came through there over a long period of time. Some of them were there only just for a week, maybe two weeks. A lot of them were there for two, three years at the time. So you can imagine the traffic that was going on there for training, training the conversions. We also had the aircraft coming in from different parts of the country down to here, which would then be put on board, would be flown from Daedalus after hospital refitting for use. Uh, it sent on to aircraft carriers, which were stationed in the harbour, and they would all be anchored out in, in the Solent. So you've got quite a lot of 
things which went on in the area. So you can imagine the amount of air traffic that was around this area at that moment in time. It was literally packed. Never mind, never mind the warships and the aircraft carriers, the tugs, the civilian vessels. It was it must have been mayhem out there, but it must have been a lovely sight as well to see at the same time. But during the Normandy invasion, as a, as the area itself, you had over a thousand sorties come out from Daedalus during the Normandy invasion alone. And they were all the spotter aircraft. So they came from here, across there, prior to Normandy as well, to see what the Germans had in the areas. Photographs. We checked the, during the invasion itself, they went to see where the fall of shot was. So they could just follow shot. Because at that moment in time, before the troops went, went ashore, didn't really have that many personnel actually over there. Yes, we sent in a small detachment prior to see what was there. That was only a small detachment. You're talking about a large area of land. They can't cover it all. There's aircraft going over there, spotter aircraft, photograph reconnaissance. You can take a large area and you can analyze that within what, a couple of hours of landing. And that was in itself was a good thing. And the aircraft that were used were, as I've said, Mustangs, Typhoons, and the um, Spitfires during that time were extremely fast, so they could evade. And they weren't armed either. They were just literally bare aircraft with the cameras built into the sides. They would heel over, take the photos, and get out of there as quick as they could. And that's so you can imagine they must have been, you know, clenching their their, their buttocks when they were flying across there. So that there I've got it on the screen now is all the aircraft that were used and all the squadrons that were took place in Daedalus during the Second World War. And that shows, as I said, the amount of traffic that would have been here. It must have been absolute hair raising for the for the uh, traffic control because you never knew what was going to come over the horizon at any point in time so it was a bit of fun for them i suppose so just then at the moment now we've got two photographs that were taken by gentlemen that i'll mention in a short while and you've got the grumman avengers there that was the first time the grumman avengers actually landed in britain they came across from america on an aircraft carrier which dropped anchor in the Solent. They took off from the aircraft carrier and landed in Daedalus. So that was the first time they'd actually set wheel in Britain. I'm going to begin in touch with the Grumman company at some point and ask them if they, if they would like a copy of that, because I don't suspect they have, because these photographs have not been seen in the public before. So that's going to be a lovely little surprise for them, I suspect. The other photograph there is a very unusual one, because you've got one of the aircraft on the left, because Wellesley that was the predecessor to the Wellington. The Wellington is, is, is double engines, twin engines. The Wellesley is single engines. It's not exactly the best sort of aircraft for a bomber, but that's what it was originally developed for. But that's exactly why the evaluation was were done down here. It was you had two, sometimes three, crew aboard. You had the pilot in the front. You can't quite see where the uh, gunner and radio operator is because it's just behind where the wing is along the fuselage. Yeah. That's what you'll have in there. So that must have been a hair raising thing itself. You're going off, off over the ocean there with one engine and hoping it holds out. And that was the predecessor, as I said, to the Wellington, which was a lot more reliable, but that was just further on down the line. You've also got the bow fighter there, and the bow fighter, as well as the uh, Blenheim were marvellous night fighters. They were superb. They were very fast and very agile. They could take a lot of hits before anything really badly happened to them. And being a twin engine as well, you've got a better chance of survival. And of course, a Hawker Hurricane, which you also had down here. You also had the Seafire, which was 
the marine version of the naval version of the Spitfire, and you also had the Hawker Sea Hurricane, which again was the sea, the sea version of it. They both had hooks and a better landing gear. So they found when they took the Spitfires aboard the ship, the where they were designed, as well as the Hurricane, was designed for landing on grass strips. The um, undercarriage would take would take the bounce. Okay, talking about not exactly the best sort of ground, a big field, effectively. So what they had to do is they had to bring them back back on land, take them off the aircraft carriers, bring them back on land, and they had to firm down the undercarriage. And when they then tried it again, it landed as perfect as you can get. Only problem was that with the Spitfire, they're fairly narrow are in the carriage. But they were very effective aircraft themselves. The Hurricane we had a wider undercarriage, so it would take a lot more. And that's what they were. And that's what happened. Now, I've gone on here to say what happened after the war, because I thought bring into this to show how things developed after that moment in time. It says that in 1959, it ceased being the uh, Daedalus as such. It became HMS Ariel. So there was a place, one of the, the um, departments up at, up at Winchester. Um, I actually spent that, spelled that wrong, but never mind. Um, closed down, and then they brought it down, down this area. It just, uh, just a bit of history. It wasn't uh, Ariel for long, though, but... It was just a bit of extra little bit information there. And we also had the... Um... Yes, I do, I do actually know who... I'll, I'll mention that in a short while. I'll mention that in a short while. Yeah, I've got other photos which were taken by him as well. And this was this area itself, Daedalus, became the... Um, I just got there, the Joint Services uh, Hovercraft Unit. The way they went to the test to see where the hovercraft were going to be viable for the military. And they would come down the slipway, same way as um, the hovercraft um, from South Sea. So that's a nice, nice little bit for South Sea for you, Lana. And same sort of thing. They would go down the slipway, but they would also then go back down onto Brown Down. The trials unit would see how they would react along there for the shingle, for the sand, how they would react under various conditions. And they came up fairly well. And there's still some forces in the world who still use it. So I don't, I don't know why we, just, we don't use it anymore. It's just the way things happen these days. We sell all our stuff abroad. So that's what happens. And unfortunately, in 1996, it's, as it says, there became surplus use for the MOD and lay dormant for many years until it was taken over by Gosport and Fairham Council to become what it is now. Where they're just building some houses on there, but it's also become industrial and the airfield is still in use. So it still has its purpose in the area of employing people, keep them keeping trade in the area. So that's what I'm saying. Same sort of thing as what happened in Heathrow. It's got its long-term use. It's not MOD, shut down, everything shuts down. It's continuously evolving. And that is a good thing in itself. You look, you look at most MOD establishments, they have a secondary use afterwards. So just going to see what happens now with Sultan. And go from there. And what I've done as well during my research, I had a look at what was in RAF Gosport, which is just around the corner, which is now the Rhone um, um, estate. And as it is there, there weren't that there wasn't that much going on there during the time. It was a fairly small backwater during that point in time. It was just it it was. Uh, an emergency runway area, effectively. That's what, it, that's what it became for all the establishments in the area. And quite a few of them, of the squadrons that were there, actually transferred in to Daedalus. 
amalgamated with other units there. Uh, it's just one of those little offshoots of it that uh, seem to have died down so much. So what I was going to say is that the gentleman who took those photos, he unfortunately died during the war. And he was a leading seaman and warner. And he was fortunate to be on and um, it seems to be swinging up, but that's it. <laughs> he was fortunate to be on um, one of the escort vessels for the Ark Royal when they did a, a supply run to Malta in 1941, November 1941. And he was fortunate in some ways that he, and he was also a photographer for the War Department during the time. So he had all the equipment there. He was in the convoy, and the Ark Royal was hit by a torpedo fired by the U-81 on his way back to Gibraltar from Malta. The torpedo hit the, hit the machine room. And in the machine room, you've got all the electrics run from it. You've got all the um, engines run through, through the system there. There's so much there, and it simply cut all all the pumps, everything. So when they hit there, you had a big hole in the side. It unfortunately killed one crewman. When they were uh, on, after that situation, engines died. So three tugs out from Gibraltar to try and get her back there to get repaired. Two of the tugs didn't make it. Uh, they got, they for some reason got lost in fog. Uh, it's a typical sort of uh, scenario. You go out there and all of a sudden, where is everything? The third tug there got there. They took her under tow and she started going down and she started listing over rather badly on a port side. And they had to cut the line because it just wasn't feasible. They had a skeleton crew up on there, aboard there trying to repair the damage and trying to pump out. That didn't work. The remaining crew were taken off and soon after, the vessel itself turned turtle. It just went over with aircraft aboard and everything. And only out of these five photos you got here, only two of them have ever been seen to the public. So this is a bit of a privilege in itself for people who are watching this, that these are images other than two of them have never been seen before. So it's a bit of a bit of an eye opener what happens in those situations, and a bit of a find for us. And these were found through the um, when the, this gentleman, his son, died a couple of years back, and his family, who were neighbours of mine, went there and they found all this stuff, and they found out that he was the one that took these photos. Mm -hmm. There are some other photographs. Tim? Sorry. These are some of the other photographs which were also taken. You've got on the top right there, you've got the Argus. That was, that was in Portsmouth Dockyard. Top left, you've got the renowned. Bottom left, you've got the courageous. The one on the bottom right, we're not quite sure what vessel it is. So if anyone could help us with that, it'd be brilliant. The one in the middle is the intriguing one. That there, and we've got it from, that. The, these are all taken by this gentleman, by um, leading seaman Warner. The one in the middle, the aircraft there, which is a Hawker Fury, was being put onto a catapult. The catapult was destined originally for the HMS Hood. But the Hood went down. They then thought, okay, we're going to use this catapult. It's act it was actually in uh, RAF Gosport, which is now Sultan. And this, I've got, there's aerial photographs. I've not got any here at the moment with me, but it shows it 
actually sitting in front of one of the hangers, which is still in place now. So we can virtually pin down, pin down exactly where that catapult was. And on one of the photographs, you've actually got an aircraft on the catapult. So I'm going to have to dig that, photo, that aerial photograph out at some point. But you can see there, just from looking at the top left when they're of the Renown, the atmospherics of that, you know, all the waves going over the ship. And that, that I believe, was in the North Sea. So lovely little pictures. And these were, these were the parts of those pines. So his son also became a photographer. And these are photographs which he took at Daedalus and at RAF Gosport. You've got the Dragon Rapide there in the top left. The middle one there is a Lysander. You didn't see him down here very often. That was just that was a one-off photograph that was taken here. But the one on the right, though that was Spitfire. No, sorry, that, that was a Seafire. I was being prepared to go onto an aircraft carrier. This was after the Second World War, which would then which then went down to South Africa. But the two bottom photographs, remember earlier on I said about 781 Squadron, which were um, evaluation, training, conversion, and so forth. That was the last photograph taken of that squadron at Daedalus. And that was just a couple of months before Daedalus shut down. And when we had these photographs up on a display at the Lee Festival, we had a gentleman come up to us and he said, I know those two people. I was off that day when those photographs were being taken. But yes, I remember them. I remember it, it was going to be taken, but I was off. And he, we've actually given him a copy of each of those two bottom photographs. So he's now got them for posterity of showing his mates when he was uh, when he was working there. So, and these were also photographs that were taken by him. And you've got two photographs there of the RAF Golf Sports airfield, slightly, you know, one slightly after the other. So you've got it in, I know it's not 3D, but you can see the sort of thing there. That was how the airfield was. And you can see there aircraft lined up at the edge of the strip there. And that was from a biplane, obviously. But right below it, you've got an, an Avro Anson. Now, the Anson was one of the training aircraft as well used in the area. And there's the crew there uh, looking, you know, as, a, as if they just had a lovely day out. But you can see on just to the right of it there. There's an air, there's one of the Anson's there that was that was stationed down here. Obviously had a slight accident on this uh, run in because the undercar just collapsed on one side. And above it, you've got two Sea Furies. Um, I'd like to try to explain that on my insurance if I were them. So, <laughs> so there's the little things that happen unfortunately when you've got a, an airfield. So, and I think that is the end of that lot. So, if anyone's got any questions, let us uh, see what we can help with. Well, that was really good. I mean, I was just sitting there listening to that, and it was really interesting to know a little bit about the, the squadrons there. And those last photos were they um they Daedalus or they uh, RF Gosport? They were they were Daedalus and Gosport. Okay, so mixture. The two, the two, the two bottom ones were Daedalus. They were uh, 781 Squadron. And then you've got the Ansons were Gosport and the Lysander and the Dragon Repeat. They were in Gosport as well. And were they, um, <clears throat> sorry for the questions, <laughs> were they um, after the war, during the war? They were just after the Second World War, those, those ones were. They okay. were taken by uh, Mr. Uh, Lean Seaman's Warner's son, who was also okay. also worked there. So, so he, he carried out his legacy then. Yes, yeah, yeah. He also sure. took quite a few of the photos of Sultan as it was being built up. But right. uh, I've got to try and get, get some copies of them, so showing how 
uh, some of the structures you see there now, some of the more newer structures, uh, which we can see from Grange Road, when they were built. And they were only built in the 1960s. So it's not that long ago, only just over 50 years. Hmm. Well, for, for those people that are watching at home, um, if you'd like this format that we're using now, just ping us a com comment in the, in the chat box and say, yes, we like it. And what we'll do, we'll endeavour when we have the live streams to bring you a presentation of some of the history of the area. Uh, and that's the best that we can do. We, we, we've got stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of photographs from around the area during the war, after the war, before the war, between the wars. Um, so if, if that's the sort of thing that you'd like to see, just let us know and we'll bring more to you. If there's anything specifically that you want to see, just, uh, again, pop a, a message in the chat box and we'll do our best to bring it to you. There is, there is something I would like to start doing. I would like, I would like other people to start doing it, if possible, as well. Any of the old photographs they've got, See if you can pin down exactly where it was taken from and try taking a photograph of that same angle, if possible, now. <laughs> so you've got, old, you've got the old and the new of the same point in, in the views to see how things have changed. It's quite funny you mentioned that, James, because um, last year, I think it was, um, it might have been early January, <laughs> me and Bailey, the History Week organiser, we had a, um, a little bit of a rendezvous um, up at Leon Solent was talking over some plans and things for History Week. And I showed him this photograph of uh, a gentleman standing in front of the Lee Tower in his, um, in his summer suit. And Bailey uh, was wearing a similar suit. So we thought, why not? And we recreated that photo and uh, we actually posted it up onto the group's platform. And the amount of interest that gathered, and, and, and it was so unique to see how exact it was. Because we, what we've done is, I've got, as, you, as everyone knows, I've got an editing studio, so I usually do all the graphics of the group. So what i done was I got this other man out of the way and put Bailey there and turned him back into 1961, I believe it was. And I don't know whether I can bring that photo up. Um, if you just bear with me. See so if you can share your screen. So, uh, in the meantime, if you can uh, just give us a click on the like button. doesn't cost anything to click the like button, and it really helps out. And if you really feel brave, click the subscription. Subscribe to the channel, so and, and click, click Get Notified. And you'll get notified every time that we go live. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to the channel. So don't think you'll get charged. But just click the like and subscribe button. And uh, and it just helps us out. And if you've got any messages, any comments, just pop them in the chat box. And... <laughs> and he's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how did it go on Thursday with the live stream you did then about the boating? Oh, we had a really good evening. Um, I had quite a few guests come in. Unfortunately, uh, I had a couple of special guests that had to drop out at the last minute uh, due to illness. Um, but we're hoping to get them back another time. But we had a good day, uh, mm -hmm. a good chat. So, uh, for those that don't know, I do uh, a Tim Hill Thirsty Thursday live stream every Thursday from 7 until 9. And we talk about all manner of stuff. Um, in the past, we've done about veterans' mental health. We've had a mental health special. We've had a boating special. And um, odd weeks, we have uh, an open forum. This week coming, we've got another open forum where we're going to be chatting about all manner of stuff so if you fancy joining in on that live stream you're more than welcome it's up on um all the the, the popular platforms it's up on youtube uh, whatsapp um what else are we on twitter twitch linkedin 
and Facebook. So if you want to join in, just look for the Tim Hill live stream and uh, come and join in the fun. So we've got William back. Hopefully he's managed to sort out uh, sharing the screen. Yeah, I'm working when you've got the live stream going <laughs> No, Honestly, I, it was a nightmare. I, 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 I did click Facebook, and that was it. The laptop desired to say no more. That's, that's not we're, we're not working today. So, anyway, I've got that photograph. Um, so, what I will do is I will share screen. I won't do that just yet. Let me get the photo ready first. Hang on. Um, can you see me? Here we are. All right. How's that? Can you see that? Uh, no, no, not a thing. <laughs> we can see what you can see. We can see what you can see. Okay, this is that. There we are. How's that? Can you no. see it? Yeah, it's just coming in now. Hang on. Let me pull that up. Boom. There you go. So, right, you can see this. You can see this gentleman standing in front of the, the Lee Tower and Complex. Um, that's a, that's a typical, typical 60s, 70s pose that is. Yes, isn't it, just? And if we transport Bailey back to that era, we get this. <laughs> Which I don't think is too bad, considering my editing skills are probably not as good as some of the other people. But I thought it was... When you actually look at the, the contrast between the two photographs, and I think I've actually got two... Together. No, I haven't. Anyway, so that's the two photographs. Um, so that's what James was referring to, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So where are we? We're uh, we're forty seven minutes in today. So has anybody got any questions? Do you want to tell them how to get involved, Tim? Throw you right at the deep end again. You <laughs> tell them how to get involved. Come well, on, you're, you got, you're good at this. Have you have you got the um the photo from last time? Which one? I love a good old photo of me. Um, the one that says how to get involved. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Lana. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> I sent it to your messenger. When? <laughs> like, I've <just> done this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Mm. Put me on the spot. Why did it prime me? You know this thing's going to happen. I Tell thought you had it right. handy. No, anyway, I... anyway, James, 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 yeah. James, you can give us all that advert about History Week. Well, but... um, yeah, it's the first week of August. That's it. <laughs> it's about it, then. <laughs> what was sure. that, sorry? Uh, you're, the, you're the one with all the information. Come on. Got to put you on the spot now. Right, so History Week. Yeah. No, that's fine. I, I'm, I like being on the spot. So History Week. It's 1st to 7th of August. Now, it's a great opportunity to open your door. Not that obviously all you do. Get outside. Walk around your town, your, your city, your local community, and walk about our heritage. We've got places like ramparts. We've got libraries open up to do talks. We've got archaeology teams coming down to do to do events for us. That's all I can say on that. But I'm giving you away too much than I probably should. I think I'm getting the, the evil eyes from James right now. Um, <laughs> and it's a great opportunity to explore your local community between the 1st and 7th of August. I said, we've got a low happening. We've got so many places opening up, so many things happening. We've got Falkland stuff. We've got war heritage. We've got... Uh, airplanes we've got everything so between these dates get out explore your town explore your city and learn something that you didn't know and you can go behind the scenes too which is the best thing and for 2022 every single event will be free but we are asking the public to make small donations to help to not just to say thank you to these organizations who are throwing open their doors for free for the public this year um you know it's as i said i, I can't sell it enough Please come and support this this year because next year will be the deciding point. And I can promise you this one thing is that this will be coming back every single year. It's going to be something everyone will look forward to. 
it's something that you put in your diary on the 1st of um, January. So come and support us, please. And don't forget right. as well, we've got a Falklands event going on on 14th and 19th of June. That's it. So that's uh, one of the buildings next to the Explosion Museum. 101 Heritage Way. But don't turn up to that address because you'll end up going into some old dear's house. Um, <laughs> but if you put that address in, you, you'll, you'll find us. There'll be plenty of signs, people buzzing around. Um, and for that for that exhibition, we've got a couple points. We've got, I think it's three points we've got to that. We've got a um, documentary-style video, which Tim, being the head of uh, media and digital projects, is creating. We've got two timelines being created by James and his team of researchers. Um, and one of those timelines is the main events, which covers the 2nd of April down to the 14th of June. And all of all the bits you don't normally get to know about what happened with the Falklands. And you've also got what I'm really looking forward to is the naval timeline, um, which covers the date all the all of the ships left to when they came back and all the stories there. So, same point number two, three, how to be involved. I mean, we've told you before, we're going to tell you again, and every time you come on this stream, Tim will have this ready for the future, and we can tell you how to be involved. So, Thanks for the warning. Follow... Yeah, there we are. Don't do it next time, that's it. Anyway, so volunteering, as everyone knows, it's a vital part of any organisation, not just this one. <laughs> In a minute, okay. Without it, you know, generally we wouldn't be sitting here talking to you, so... I must say to everyone who has joined the team, thank you ever so much. Uh, to James, who's really spearheaded the group since uh, 2020, I think it is now. So one of the virtually co-founders. We've got Tim, as I said, who's doing our, all of our media stuff. We've got Liz, who's our secretary. We've got two other young members now. So Ellis Diggle, he's another researcher, but he's, he's testing the waters of different departments he might like to go into fully. We've got Bailey up at Leon Solent, who's doing History Week. He's organising some really fantastic events, which I'll tell Lana all about in a minute. So get involved with us. You know, why do you want to get involved with us? Well, you can dig up the past, not literally, but you can go through all of our archives. You can find stories. You can help us to educate our group members and the public. If you wanted to help steer the group, you can join the committee get things done, play that politician that's always been in you. Or perhaps you just want to turn up to our events um, and help out the day, which we will be needing for History Week, as well as probably our Falklands exhibition, but that's to be confirmed. So get stuck into our history. So you can email us on getinvolved at mail.com. That goes straight to the team, who will then send out forms and meetings, get you all hooked up into our history group. And we really look forward to working with you very soon. That is my um, my sales pitch over now. <laughs> and also, if you've got any old photographs yourself, let us see them. And if we can you use them, them back. <laughs> we'll, give, we'll, give, we'll give them back. We'll take copies if, if, <laughs> uh, with, with permission, obviously. And if you'd give permission, we could then hopefully use them for any events we do relevant to that area the photograph of so you, you may find someone just around the corner you didn't know was there until until you go to one of the events hmm? oh yeah definitely so is ellis coming on this evening or bailey we'd love to see wid who's the others then yeah you got i got a team of them sitting there lying over <laughs> so no um simple answer quick one they won't be joining us tonight they are sadly busy I tried to do my best to persuade them, but Bailey's got, um, he's under the weather at the moment, but he'll be soon joining back in on our live streams and our committee meeting very soon. Ellis, again, he's very busy with group stuff and other personal things, but I reassure you they will be joining us soon with some special things near the time for History Week up at Leon Solo, doing a bit of push for that. So you also said, Lana, come on, William, I want to hear about History Week. So what do you want to know, really? Well, we've got, some, we've got some really exciting stuff coming up for History Week. We've got some tours that are going to take you behind the scenes 
of places you don't normally get to go and see. And that's... that's Obviously, we can't give all the information at the moment. No. We want to I mean, keep on tent the hook as much as possible. <laughs> it's, it's exactly that. And it's what I, what I said from the beginning. I mean, normally when you organise an event, you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to take place. But with this type of platform that we've created here, it's just waiting to see who wants to take part. But what I can say is, everyone else has said here, we can't tell you too much. But what we can tell you is, it's going to be a long week. We're going to be very tired at the end of it. <laughs> and it's going to be fantastic. And as Tim said, you'll get to go all behind the scenes. So let us have one hint. Okay. Now. Ooh, oh, one I hint. Can, I can. Dockyard. We've got a we've got a big Dockyard. name involved. I think that's Portsmouth and Gosport. Portsmouth and Gosport, that's a big hint. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got we we've got a big organization involved, and as far as I can tell you at the moment. And to, uh, it is a is a better one, James. Um a nationwide organization. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. That that kind of trumps me. I've just got <laughs> I, I just got one bloke. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got I've got some interesting stuff going to be going on over in Portsmouth. Um, what I can tell you, this is this is what I can tell you. I recently spent all my pocket money. Yeah, I know how sad. Um, and I got myself an entire battle dress from the Second World War. And we will be, well, I will be, uh, along with the team and everything like that, to support me doing it. We will be researching into uh, the Second World War history and gospel, uh, more involved in the British Army, um, because obviously my uniform depicts me as a, um, uh, anyway, during the Second World War. I can't, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, <laughs> Um, and we will Not do the doing... no. <laughs> we will be doing um, walks around uh, old barrack sites, old military sites in Gosport and Portsmouth, with me dressed up in full battle battle dress, giving you every little thing about British Army in Gosport and Portsmouth. So that is what I can tell you. That is because we can tell you that because it's from inside our little circle. Um, what else can we tell you? The, the rampart. Him, do you think we should give him some army drill? Lessons. Uh, oh, oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I just, I just got to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gonna put a uniform on. You need will to. Will James be... and T Will James and Tim be dressed up too? I think they're already dressed up, aren't uh, they? They got <laughs> their skirts, have, don't they? I think we've had many years of it already. I don't think we need any more. I don't know. <laughs> oh, here we are. I've got. Um... I've got one or two uniforms I could put on. Possibly I haven't, baby. Got, I haven't got any left. Stripsies. Maybe, maybe I could put news on. It, 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 Tim, come then. Got, got to go. Da, 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 da. Got, to, got to start stripping now. <laughs> I'm not going to put it on now. <laughs> not this minute, anyway. No. But, but yeah, maybe I'll um, for, for one of the talks, one of the uh, one of the the events I may put on the old, uh, my old blues and have a, a walk around with the old pay stick and uh, point out where James is going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a lot of a lot of it then. But <laughs> <laughs> might give him a few pointers with his drill. <laughs> it's, been, drive, it's been many years. Drive. <laughs> it's been many years since I've had to do any drill work. Well, I, of course, I spent eight years anyway. in London with guards. I'd just like to point out that I'm not a guardsman. However, <laughs> I did work with the guards for eight years and, and and picked up one or two tips on how to do guard and um, shine your boots. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Anyway, are we going to have that break now? Yeah, we're going to take take a couple of minutes break and then we'll be back. So in the meantime, thanks everybody for for joining in. And let's just put that on. And what I'll do is I'll drop us down. And I'll leave that.
Welcome back to the Portsmouth and Gospel History Group live stream. So we're just going to, we just had a quick sort out of what we're going to do next. So I'm going to bring the guys back in. And missed us off. there you go. I hope uh, no one hasn't missed us too much. Well, he's on. <laughs> I won't hear what's going on, will I? Okay, so uh, welcome back to part two. Let's drop that down out of the way. Right, where are we going now? What are we going to do? Are you going to share your screen, William? Oh, always, always. So um, if you can share your screen and then uh, then James can talk through it. There we are. Yeah. Okay, here we go then. Are you ready? It's coming into the room. I thought, hey. I, can, I thought I could see you very well. Hang on, let's see if I can make that better. As as that, a bit better, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This is a part which Williams just reminded me about, and it's interesting uh, when you think about the people that lived around at the time. And this is actually on our website as well, so it's useful for people to get some archive information. Is and it's to do with a young man who lived at Lee at the time, and it was Geoffrey Browning. He was born in Lee on the 16th of November 1916. His parents were Robert and Bernice Browning, the, but they were baker and confectioner. And what has got on here, and it's further on down, obviously, that's, um, it says here, when Great Britain declared war on Germany in 1939, there followed a strong period, a long period, sorry, of apparent inaction. I think you need to just a spelling mistake in there, but never mind. Uh, in, hang, on, I, hang on, I, did, I didn't type this, by the way, so don't, don't accuse me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, the, with the airfields uh, rapidly expanding, there was a large civilian workforce. Uh, on the site, filling hangars and extending the runway. The, uh, the, the pier was breached by blowing a section out. Well, when you think about it, it's an ideal landing spot for any uh, German um, ship to berth against it. And um, yeah, uh, on, uh, but, but, uh, in place, Lee continued uh, among the same businesses as, as normal. On the 10th of July 1940, the Germans launched uh, its Blitzkrieg on the UK and the Battle of Britain began. At about 1 pm on the 16th of August 1940, the Luftwaffe launched an attack on Lee. 
uh, with Ju88 and Ju87 dive, dive bombers. At this time, Jeffrey Brown and Cecil Grote, one of, his, one of his friends, were out on deliveries heading for the airfield. The German aircraft attacked Jadlers with bombs and machine guns. The Baker's van was, was strafed by machine gun fire while it was travelling along Marine Parade uh, by the Ju-88 aircraft. Cecil was killed instantly and Jeffrey was very badly injured and died later of his injuries at War Memorial in Gosport. Jeffrey Brown was 24 and Cecil, Br uh, and Cecil Grout was 13 years old. Uh, they, they are remembered at the Lee and the Solon Memorial. Cecil is the youngest person on the memorial. Six, un six other civilians were killed during that raid and many other injured. That was given to us by John uh, Gledhill, who was, was the original uh, research of the uh, first article. So, yeah, so um, I'm not muted, so that's good. So, so yeah, so that was a little bit about the, the accident, oh, yeah. accident. <laughs> it's a little bit about the thing yeah. that happened on the 16th of August, and that was a little bit about the Blitz on the other side by John Julie Gledhill. Now, he's a fantastic chap. Um, who's done quite a lot of Johnny, research. Can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Give it his own, no. Can you hear me now? No, I can't work out why we can't hear him. We can hear us. Oh, hang on. That might be why. <laughs> Moved the wrong slide. Can you, you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So, <laughs> I was, I I was just saying... Else. Apart from us. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just repeat. Right. Um, so that was a little bit about John... Uh, no, no, that was a little bit about the Blitz on the other side on the 16th of August. Uh, now, that was researched by a chap called John Julie Gledhill. Now, he's a historian for Leon Solent, and he's done quite a lot of research into this. If I just quickly share this, and this is what he's been up to. And he's a fantastic chap, and he's really helped with the group also, so I must give my thanks to him. Um, there we are. Can't do that one now. Um, hang on, sorry about that. I am trying my best to get my digital things to work. Um, we, we are a very organised team, by the way. The gremlins are out again? <laughs> yes, of course they are. I yeah, jump on with my digital tech and everyone runs. Right, here we are. <laughs> so this is the Leon Solent um, War Memorial page. Now this is all research on Gledgehill. Um, so if we actually have a look here, we can have a look around his site. And he's not actually an organisation, but he does it because he wants to make people aware of the names on this memorial here. And I think what he's done is fantastic because we done an event with him last year for History Week, our first trial week. And um, he told me so much stuff about Leon So And I, I, being an enthusiast myself, I didn't know half the stuff he was talking about. And and by the time I came away, I was, you know, I couldn't wait to tell everyone else about it. Now, I don't know whether I can find it on here, but can you still hear me still? Yeah, yeah, we can yeah, we can hear you, mother. <laughs> uh, so this is about um, Browning and Grout, um, and these are all the other men that sadly lost their lives in the war, um, both wars. So it's a great resource as well. Um, sorry, there's a lot of names on here. I've got to scroll right down. There he is again. So. If you, oh, there we are. Mansfield Hotel. Oh, I can't click it. Anyway, so this was a, um, I believe if I read that quickly. So, yeah, so it used to be, well, it, well now is the Glen Heather's Rest Home, like a nursing home, but it used to be um, uh, belonging to the Admiralty at the beginning of the Second World War. 
and was used for the Wrens um, stationed at HMS Daedalus. And on the 23rd November 1940, 24 Wrens uh, were in the dining room having their supper, no doubt. And the Luftwaffe, back at it again, were targeting places on the south coast um, of England. And unfortunately, one of the locations was the Mansfield Hotel. And sadly, 10 of the Wrens um, were killed and 13 injured. And um, if you go there now, you can actually see the plaque on the floor where um, it's, they're remembered and they use all the names who so sadly died. So we've got quite a lot of people from Gosport, Portsmouth, all over quite all over the place, actually. So I thought I'd just share that quickly with you while we're talking about Leon Solent. A little bit unorganised tonight. Um, my end, anyway. Here we are. Back now. Back in the room. We'll promise to do better next week. <laughs> It's, it's, it's only because it's only oh, because um, it's, it's only because um, the older uh, presentation um, went quicker than I imagined, didn't it? I, like the last time, Long and Rounder uh, obviously has more history than Daedalus does. <laughs> but hopefully next week, uh, when you know next time we do this, we'll have some um, special guests, uh, a couple of people from the so and talking about events happening up there. We've got some other organisations hopefully coming on next time we do this. We will be chatting about. Forget, don't forget we've got to do something on uh, on South Sea as well, haven't we? Oh yeah, for Lana. Yeah, we can't forget South Sea. We're trying to put that all in for just for Lana this one. Um, but we'll do a dedicated one just for just for Lana. Um, and so yeah, so we've got a couple of people coming on next week. Hopefully, we're going to have some people talking about a restoration project on a church over in Portsmouth. So they get a bit of exposure, hopefully. So but, ne next week, uh, so we're going to come on next week and the week after is Easter. And then, yeah. and then there'll be two weeks after that that we'll be back on. Yeah, so we're just going to sort, because otherwise we won't... Um, so the dates for your diary is Sun too. Sunday the 10th and then Sunday the 1st of May. So we'll, we'll, okay. we'll have a two-week two, two break. Okay. Oh, because what, can we start it now? <laughs> let's say, say I, I'm not available the 24th, unless you want to run it. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Well, you did most of the talking earlier. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's just a case of clicking buttons, isn't it? Or is it? <laughs> 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 well, uh, if I don't, if you're not here, who else can I put on the spot? Get things up. Well, I mean, put yourself on the spot. Oh yeah, ask myself questions. <laughs> Maybe I could show you how to do it. Oh right, okay then. I hear a burning question that no one is typing right now, and I and she hasn't even posted it yet. She wants to know all about our website. So, who wants to take that away? Tim, do you want me to put you on the spot again? Do you want to show no one all about the website? Can you share your screen? Uh, um, let me let me find where the website is. Love putting on your spot. Um, oh, whose website are we going to put on there? I could I could put my website on there. <laughs> oh no, well, we're done with it. Hang on. Again, we're very organised. Uh, tell you what, our <laughs> events will not be anything like this. So <laughs> there you go. There's the website. We'll, we'll click it then. I have. It's there. Portsmouth for Gospel History dot com. Right. I'll, 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 share my, I'll share my screen then. So I'll give you a little bit of a run through of our website, how you use it. Um it's quite self explanatory. But oh, you, you want to pull the website out, I can't do that. <laughs> oh, I can. I, I've, not, I've got more technology than you, Tim. Not without losing the stream. <laughs> right. Ta da. Right. Can you see it? And just find it below. Uh, okay. All good? All good. It's up there. Brilliant. Right. So, this is portsmouthgospelhistory.com. So, usually you just see a little strip at the bottom, but now you actually get to see our wonderful website. So, for easy use, you've got home, you've got about us, you've got articles, you've got projects, you've got history week, you've got podcasts, which are coming soon on here got events and got contact us so the main page just tells you a little bit about us who we are how to get involved so 
help us to uncover the past. Our Falklands exhibition, which is 14th to 19th of June, down in Prince Howard, situated next to the Explosion Museum. Look at me and my wonderful sales pitch. You've got a little bit more here, so you click that. Yeah, thank you to the old Falklands exhibition. And supported by the Portland Naval Base Property Trust. So, go back home. Oh, it loads. Right, our work. So this is a new feature that I've added to the Edward site. So instead of just having articles, you've got pages um, in themselves, which look a little bit better. So you've got World War I. The way that William puts these things in without us knowing about it. Yeah. He's just like a magician, <laughs> isn't he, friends? What was that? <laughs> I think we want to put him on the spot a bit more. <laughs> well, you know, who else wants to design a website? It took me ages doing this. Let's see anyone else doing it anyway. Oh, you've um, got nothing to do with your time, have you? No, he's just, oh, he's just, he's just, he's just a student. He's just a student. Student, see? Yeah. If, I tell if, you what. He was, if he wasn't doing this, he, he would only be in his pit. <laughs> well, I'll, tell you what. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Who started this bloody group? I need to have a moan at them for putting me in this spot right This is a position right now. Oh, wait, that is me. Yeah. <laughs> Boots right, on the so, other <laughs> yeah. I can't put anyone else on the spot. So, so World War One, local history. Uh, World War Two is coming soon. It already happened, but you know there we are. Um, so we do. We don't actually. We do, but there you show your history. They all form two of us. We've got History Week. Find out more button. Uh, a little bit about here. There's our ugly mugs. Um, just don't look at that one. Then we've got James. We've got Tim. We've got Liz. We've got Bailey. We've got Ellis. Some wonderful photos of the area. Uh, a little bit more about us. So go back to the top. If you're still awake and listening, um, let's go to articles. It is a history group after all. So learn a little bit more about World War One. So learn a little bit about letters from the First World War. Uh, if it works, can you still hear me all? Unfortunately, yes. You're waffling. Get on with it. Right, okay, okay, right, I won't talk for now on them. Anyway, <laughs> letters to him from the front. So during the First World War, many soldiers fighting all over the world sent letters, postcards, photographs back home to their loved ones. So much, in fact, the average soldier wrote just over seven a week, and the postal, sent, the postal service ended up sending a mere 12 million letters each week. The British Army assured the delivery of letters from families at home loved ones from the soldiers because they knew it was essential for morale so this is a little bit a little just taken from one of our own um letters we have in our archive so it's quite poignant that <laughs> and what are you laughing for nothing you carry on i bet uh, i bet lana can't tell this is all scripted can you <laughs> Right, okay. I'm going to leave in a minute if you keep at me like this. Oh, yeah? Right. Shall we carry on? So, go on, go on. Yeah. Anyway, well, you put me off Put me off it now. Um, articles, projects, the full works. We've only got just over half an hour ago. That's okay. I think everyone's fallen asleep or just turned off by now, so it's good. Uh, History Week, a little bit about that, lovely logo, designed by Moi. Um, here we are. Come on, tell us a bit more about History Week. Well, I can't, I can't tell any more, otherwise I'll be shocked. There, there, there must be some juicy little nuggets you can uh, let slip. <sighs> I must, if I must. Right. So, I'm, I'm working on a little project. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. Hang on, who did you just ask? I thought you just well, asked I'm, me. I'm, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Seeing you sort of bolt at it, I thought I'd, uh, <laughs> I'll chuck in me two pennies worth. I'm working on a little, <laughs> little project. I'm hoping to get somebody that's going to do a couple of tours around HMS Vernon. And tell us what mm -hmm. HMS Vernon was all about, and and tell us how the 
Uh, I don't know if you've seen the, the Divers Memorial over in Gunwharf Keys. That used to be HMS Vernon. I, I've, I've almost got him in the bag. He's working on giving us a little uh, talk and a tour of that area as it used to be. Brilliant. And that's one of the nuggets I can give away. So this is what there's I'm trying to just now. Is, there's another little is, nugget is, over in the dockyard that I can't give away, but it's going to be behind the scenes. Ooh. So mm. what I'm showing you now is a few of the photographs from last year's trial week, <clears throat> which went fantastically. There we are. That's all the people we supported. Uh, we raised a total of £250 for these people, these organisations. So just a little bit of a taster on what to expect for this year. <clears throat> um, if you want to help us plan History Week, you can forward any inquiries, suggestions and feedback. Um, anything we can do better next year or, or something that you'd like to ask us. Uh, frequently asked questions. So what is History Week, James? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, so History Week is a local celebration of culture, heritage and traditions. And we do this through history inspired activities, events and projects and then return working with other organisations to develop this um, this new festival and one of the people we're going to be working with um, for this year um, and hopefully for future years is a nation, national group um, that's all into digging now that's all I can give you away um, but you will be seeing an announcement Monday that will tell you everything that we've got planned with them, who they are, what they do, how they're going to be helping us for History Week. And that's all I can say, otherwise there's no point in me making an announcement tomorrow on the group. So, that is my... That's me. Bit of a roundup, is it? Mm -hmm. Bit of a roundup round on, uh, on the website. So, anybody that wants to know a bit more, um, have a look at the website. And if you can... Um, and you want us to add something onto the website, get in touch with William. Put him under pressure. Say, we need this on the website. This is where you can find this and that. And um, Blimey. Yeah. Um, we'll people must to... be liking our... People you must know. be loving watching me talk about our website because we've got over seven people watching right now. So hello to seven people. Got up to 11. Record. Long yeah, must have made another seven accounts. <laughs> We're doing, we're doing well at the moment. So, Gosport. What we got going on in Gosport? I've told you a little bit about what's going on over in Portsmouth. I gave away a few little nuggets of what's, uh, what people are likely to see over there in History Week. So, what have we got going on in Gosport over History Week? That well, we can give away. That we can give away. Um, yeah. Well, we can give everything away because everything this year is going to be free. Um, so the events that are planned, we've got loads of them planned in Gospel as well as in Portsmouth. But the one I can give away, and I have mentioned before, so you probably get for me talking, is the ramparts over in Pretty's Hard. We're hoping, this is just a little bit of a thing, we're hoping to have our Falklands exhibition again during History Week, perhaps for a day or two. And you can also get involved here. But I can't give away too much. It's really winding me up because I want to tell you all now, but I can't because, you know, we just can't. <laughs> but we can do that very shortly. As said, there's going to be a big announcement Monday, this Monday coming, that tells you who we're going to be working for, uh, working for, working with for 2022. So that's my... Um... Excellent. So coming on... <laughs> Oh, are we are we going to tell them about um, the Falklands Forty exhibition? Um, you can. We have got uh, <laughs> an exhibition that we're putting together uh, for the Falklands Forty anniversary, and it's going to be based in the Explosion Museum no. or adjacent adjacent to the Explosive Museum. That's What's the, the date for it? It's the 14th to the 19th of June. 14th to the 19th of June. See, they know. They know all about it. So <laughs> I've taken the week off, so I've got to know about it. <laughs> so what we're hoping to have there, we, we, it's going to not only be just a static display of pictures and stuff like that, we're hoping to have some interactive stuff 
we've got some uh, presentations that we're going to be showing, uh, and then they will be available after on the website. We've got some podcasts that we, we're doing, and we're still looking for veterans from the Falklands. We're looking for people that were here during the Falklands War that supported it on the home front. So we're looking at wives, girlfriends, dockyard workers that were working while the Falklands was on, while the conflict was going on, what it was like. What we're looking for is people to tell us their story, what it was like when they were here waiting for information that was going on down south in the Falklands. So if you could think that you can add to our podcast, please, please get in touch. And oh, we, can, we can record your story. It'll be there forevermore. It'll <laughs> be when people look back at this time in history in a in, in hundred years' time, they will know what it was like at this time during the Falklands campaign. That was 40 years ago, obviously now. But to get your recollections recorded will be awesome for the for us. So please, please get in touch. Of course, those of us who are old enough to remember it, it was not exactly um, a pleasant thing to experience, even just on the home front. You never knew what was going to happen from one minute to the next. You never knew if uh, when you knew it was even going to come home. Well, my recollections, there. my recollections of the the Falklands War. I was in uh, Northern Ireland at the time. I was up in London, Derry, and where it was all over the news every day. Unfortunately for us, um, the IRA became a lot more active and tried to get um, some of the limelight. And we we had lots and lots of incidents during the Falklands War. Uh, and unfortunately, we lost a couple of guys during that period. So that's my, my recollections of the Falklands, uh, personal recollections. I wasn't even a twinkle in my parents' eyes, so you know, I can't say much about it from my personal record. <laughs> huh? I don't think your parents were around, were they? Yeah, they were. They're just. <laughs> no, they're not, they're not just just. Well, I was, uh, I was still in school. My last couple of years of senior school. Mm. So quite a lot of mixed uh, recollections from that period. And um, over 200 people have entered into the um, the plea we put out a few months back, asking for just general members of the public to write down their <coughs> write down their recollections of the period. And as I say, over 200 people got back to us and we're hoping to create a book with, well not a book, but a, a, a big pamphlet um, with all of that in and we'll also be putting that throughout the exhibition. So and as Tim said, it'll be an interactable one as well. And we're hoping to get the stuff that Caroline's put together. Uh, no, not just that. We've got other things as well. We've got the the naval timeline. We've got the the um the documentary that you're doing. We've got all the veterans. We've got the artifacts. We've got possibly a reenactment group coming down to do some static displays outside with vehicles and some encampments um, and things like that. So. It's all happening between the 14th and 19th of June. And of course, we'll be marking that um, as we should with a um, tribute, a roll of honour of all the people that sadly passed away during that time. Um, so as again, if you want to get involved with that, you've got all the instructions on the screen now. You can email us at getinvolved@mail.com or forward some of the emails onto the website, which is probably easy to do because you can just type them up box and click send and it goes straight to us um so a little bit less fast um so yeah so that's what we're doing for 2022 20 as we look to the future we've got a load of things happening for next year obviously for this year we're marking the queen of platinum jubilee between the 2nd and 5th of june also june's quite a busy month for us actually because we're attending um a military military convoy up at uh, Basingstoke, which with um, the History Week page is sponsored, um, or um, yeah, sponsored uh, to create them a bit more awareness for their um, 
unique tribute to the Armed Forces Day. Um, so we'll be there on the 26th of June uh, from 8pm onwards till 5. We'll probably bring a small display about um, World War II servicemen or, or something re relating to Armed Forces Day. Um, and later in the month, we've got the release of the History Week forms, uh, the History Week programmes, which will tell you every single thing that's happening, how to get to them, where to go, what to do, and things like that. And then obviously in August, you've got the day itself, History Week. Um, so we're very busy, but if you send us an email, we will get back to you. So it'll divide so, off course there, but... <laughs> Have we got any involvement up at the Overlord show this year? Well, it's it's a, it's a unique one, at least to say. So <clears throat> three of the members um, of this group, myself, Bailey and Ellis, we're reenacting three key points of British military history. So I myself, I'm going as a Second World War in my full battle dress, British. Uh, Ellis is going as NATO peacekeeping forces in the former Yugoslavia, um, and Bailey is going as a colonial uh, officer stationed over in India. So we're we're trying to get people to think about the developments of of the armed forces throughout modern history, so from the 1900s onwards. Um, Bailey's actually doing the um, Hampshire Regiment, so that's great link to this county. Um, and I will be reenacting the um, Royal Artillery, which has a very good, strong link to this area uh, during the Second World War with anti aircraft installments and batteries, and of course, forts were quite linked up with them. And Ellis, as I said, is, is going as NATO peacekeeping forces. So it's a great, it's a great little showcase of how it's evolved over the years and of course we'll be promoting the group and telling everybody all about us and what we do excellent so that's so that's what we're doing for the overlord we're not doing a um a static display like we done at the league victory festival last year um because we're really tied down that period but it's easier for us to get up there individually and do a walk around of the uh, walk around there's a walking exhibit they call it so we're really looking forward to do that so that's into the 5th of June. That's a bank so holiday. Come, come, long bank come holiday weekend for Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Come and ask them Definitely questions yeah. about their period. Definitely. Hmm. Definitely. Put them on the spot. <laughs> that sounds a bit dodgy. <laughs> really know really their history. <laughs> yes, yes. So is it, no, I'm, is I'm, it I'm, I've, got, I've got my head... I've got, I've got my head in, in this book. At the moment, it's called a British Tommy during the Second World War. It's a reference book for reenactors uh, and the like. It tells them everything about their kit, uh, what went in where, how, why it was used, why it was invented, you know, and how it was actually used during the war. So this will be, I mean, this will be a great help for me doing my reenacting. And the great thing about being a walking exhibit because you have to interact with the public. So what I planned is, you know, when I see someone out with um, a mobile phone, I'll go up and go up and oh. say, what on earth are the Germans giving you now? What's that spy craft? Or, or blimey, what's that bank note for? You know, who's that on the Who's that on the thing? And, and that's the type of stuff I look forward to doing because it, it, if people look at you, what are you on about? But of course, you're in that period, so you can't differ out of that. So... I mean, I've been told by the um, team to make sure my mobile phone's put away because obviously you're reenacting a period. So I know this is getting a big Nokia, so that'd be quite funny. So no, we're still off for some questions. So I can't, there's, uh, there's quite a few people out there watching, so if you could please click the like button and put a comment in the chat box. That would be... Great, that'll be most helpful for us. It's not a talk about the drama. I can't stop laughing. It's not just me, long. What was that about? Then? I missed something. Yeah, we, that's where we're taking the Mickey out of you. Uh, <laughs> as if we so, would. <laughs> okay. So we, we've we've got a few clicks on the like buttons, but. We need more. So 
Give the old we click do. button a like. There you are, Lana. And if do you know anything about South Sea, let's turn wow. it slightly. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. yeah, that's put her on the spot. <laughs> I, can, I can hear her fingers tightening really fast now. <laughs> so, have we got anything going on around Lee this year? Is there another Lee festival or. No, there's not a Lee festival well, this year. But um, the gentleman who's bought... organised it, Jonathan Moore, um, the man who's organised it, Jonathan Moore, um, he's been a, a great help. Um, give me three minutes, I'm sure I will. She's going on Google now. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so Jonathan, Jonathan Moore, um, he's organising, well, he's organised the Lee Victory Festival. He's done quite other events in, in Leon 7. He's doing a really good job at raising the profile there. I know he's doing his team Monstrat events. He's doing um, the Queen's Patent Jubilee with a um, lighting of a watchman beacon. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think that's the second of June. I don't know. Uh, off my heart. And the Lee Victory Festival, as far as I know, will be coming back next year. Um, so, and I'm hoping to have him on next next week's. So he'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that. So, and of course, down Silk Road, we got the uh, festival going on down there. Oh, the, the Diamond uh, Jubilee, for the uh, Platinum, Platinum Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah, Platinum Jubilee down Stoke Road uh, for the whole week. You'll have uh, shops all decked out as well, so it's going to be a lovely little. Oh, you just... yeah. and we'll be down there, won't we, James? Yeah. You used to work on Spitbank Fort. Ah, now there's something. You could tell us a few things about that then. Yeah. Did you want to come on to the show and tell us? Do you want to put a presentation together ready for come next on, week? Come on, Nana. Come on the show. <laughs> you know you want to. You can join in the fun. You can take the Just, mickey out, William. See, when I am... Um, <laughs> No, hang on. I'm not coming yeah. on next week. You will get the mick out of me like this. I'm just not good enough. Well, well there's, there's something you've got to do actually before you start. Uh, before you start putting your uniform on, get your hair cut, lad. Yes, get your feet so. together. Are you going to need to do some more work on them boots as well? I ain't got any, I'm going to get some finishing boots. What's that? Who's my brother? Is this your sister? Yeah, sadly. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why can't you get Lana on then? Hey, come on, Lana. Don't wait and be on the keyboard floor. Come on and join us. Yeah, keyboard warrior. Tell us a little bit about the old... Yeah, I see a keyboard. <laughs> I'm a busy... Well, you're not busy now because you're watching, so come on, get on. <laughs> Has she got the link? I send next it. I'll send you the link now. I will send you the link now. Go on, ping the link now. They come in, come and join us oh, for the okay. last ten minutes. Was it Spitbank that uh, Madam Whiplash wanted to buy? Was it, or was that? Um... Well, you can you can ask Lon all about it when she joins in a minute. Yeah, ping mm. the link. The come and join in, Lana. So we still need people to mm. click the like button to give us a like. What would this like? <laughs> we we care, but it'd be nice just to, to click the like button. Get some sort of response. Yeah. So if you're enjoying what we're doing, please uh, mm -hmm. please let us know. Drop a comment in the chat box. Right, she's joining. So she's joining. She is taking the bait. So she is coming on. Although now we won't have any questions, so we'll have to make up some. Mm -hmm. 
I feel so like that's going to be a bad publicity for me. Which is Spit Bank? Is that the one? Um, the far near, one? That's the nearest one, isn't it? No, the nearest one's um, Horseshoe Sands, isn't it? No, I think Horseshoe oh. Sands is near no, the island. It's the one, yeah. That's, oh, here she is. Right. You're in the room, Lana. <laughs> Say something. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Hang on, I need to have my phone up. You owe me for this, will you? Can you hear us? Absolutely. I bet he owes you big, big style. <sighs> Are you his big sister? Unfortunately so. Hang on. Oh, Hang, on. Just... Hang on, what's she saying? I can't hear her, so... You don't need to hear. We just need to hear what she's saying. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, Lana. That's okay. So no, tell us no, about. That's fine. That's okay. okay. We just need to hear what she's saying. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thank you for yeah. coming on, Lana. How do I stop that? That's okay. Okay. Oh. There you go. Mute it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Spit Bank. There we are. Um. Yeah, I worked on there in. 2014 for a couple of years um it's you really need to go and see it to like experience it it's quite something is, is it the fort that's closest to us as you come out of Portsmouth Harbour yes yeah it is and it's a is it a hotel um so it's a really luxury um hotel and they opened up the other one uh no man's fort is it called of no man's fort can't yeah, that's no man's land for. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they've turned that into a luxury hotel as well now. All right. So, what was it like when you worked there? And it's quite. Um, I mean, they've kept everything the same. Um, obviously, they've done all the bedrooms up and stuff. Um, they had uh, you could walk around the bottom of the fort as well. Um, they used to do tours around there. Um. What, but, I mean, when there was bad weather, you, you couldn't get off. You'd have to stay on there. So I, was, I could be up on there for about a week or so without going home. Oh, excellent. And I, I take it it was all catered for out there then? Five-star uh, five hotel food? Not for us, unfortunately. I didn't get that, but... <laughs> you got the scraps, did you? Yeah. <laughs> so, so what was your accommodation like then? Uh, so we was right down below, um, no windows or anything. It was really dark down there, quite eerie. Um, and the staff would have to share bedrooms and things like that. Was it cold and damp or they managed to sort of... Um, it out? was quite cold down below. Um, but in the summer, it was very, very hot because you got direct sun on the top. Um, no man's land. Um, they've got a like glass uh, conservatory at the top. Um yeah. Um, that used to get quite hot in there as well. So how much was it for We're a night out there? Oh, you're looking at like anywhere from like 200 upwards for a bedroom for the night. Ooh. And does that it's include the transport to get there? I believe so. I think the average pr price people would pay would be like three, £400 for the night. Oh, right. That includes bed and breakfast, does it? Yeah. And an empty meal? Uh, yeah. I, I guess you couldn't call out for a pizza, could you? <laughs> uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> be, be funny seeing a deliverer try to rock up on his push bike. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. We've so actually done some. Um, we've done some. We done. We've done some joint. Room. He's gone quiet again. He's what gone rubbish right since then. I don't know. He cut off our way um, through. It's probably derogatory. We done. Um, we have done some research. <laughs> we done some research into um, Spit Bank Fall. Actually, it was about the explosion that happened on um, in 1910. You can read it on our website. Or I can you now go for it now if you wanted. No, you can save your voice now, William. <laughs> <laughs> Shut down oh. right away. So how long did the, the, the hotel been open when you went to work there? Um, quite a few years, I believe. Um, I think they're up for sale now, though. All right. And what was your role? What was your job on the on the, the fort? 
Oh, just a slave for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, change, doesn't sound like it's changed then. Well, Honestly, you're... it was, t- it was terrible. Paid. So people would come on for either weddings and things like that. But we'd start at like, well, I think we'd have to get up there for about half seven in the morning. And then we'd be awake until the last person goes to bed. And that can be anything from, you know, up till four o'clock in the morning. And then you'd have to get back up for do breakfast in the morning as well. So, sure. yeah. So what was the, the transfer like from, from where, where did you get the, the boat from and to? We used to get it down um, Weevil Lane. All right, yeah. Um, but now they've moved over to Gunwolf, I believe. Um, so we'd get the boat over because um, we'd have to take all the laundry on, um, yeah. like wine, drinks, stuff like that, food. Um, and we'd go, we'd go over there um, and we'd get hoisted up. All right. Sometimes so, we'd get the rib over as well. Yeah. So it's like a little boat that you got across and then... And, and... And I actually lifted it out of the water up to the, um, if the tide wasn't in. Uh, you'd always get hoisted up. Yeah, it was quite scary, to be honest. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I dare say that they had, had the proper proper stuff there to, to pull it up with. Well, I'm hoping so. Nothing's happened yet. So. <laughs> All right, nobody fell off. No, not yet. <laughs> and did it go into a bit of a cradle or something like that? Or, or was it just sort of hanging loose and you had to sort of precariously step onto the, the pontoon type affair. Uh, yeah, steps. it was just swinging. All right. <laughs> so you'd have to try and gauge a jump and jump off without trying to fall into the sea. Blimey. You wouldn't <laughs> want it blowing too much? No. If uh, if the weather was too bad, then nobody would be getting off. Hmm. So how, how did that work if you had guests on? Well, they just have to stay on. Well, you try your best to get them off, but if, obviously if the weather was too bad, then... Yeah. So, you, so what you're trying to say then, what you're trying to say, if you go book, book some for before some really bad weather so you get the extra stay then. <laughs> <laughs> Did you charge them extra for the extra stay? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't think it happened that often, to be honest. No. I think they'd definitely try and get them off. <laughs> yeah. I think it had to be pretty bad for them to stay on. Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. Hmm. So, are you going to come and join in the uh, in the group and do some research for us? Um, yeah, I mean, it depends with work and things like that. What do you do nowadays then? Um, I work in care, so. All right, that well, could I'm... be challenging at the time. You weren't one of these got that got um, forcibly laid off for not having a jab then. No, unfortunately, I had to have them. Hmm. Well, you're, you're you're on the ideal situation in some ways because you could interview some of the residents with permission, obviously. Yeah. And get their memories. Yeah, I, it's a bit tricky because I work with learning disabilities, so I probably couldn't with them. <laughs> I don't know. It, it could be fun trying. Yeah, I could try. So Every, everyone's got memories. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, true. They, Everyone does young, have memories. Yeah, these young people that you're looking after then. Um, yeah, anywhere between eighteen and like onwards. Right. So you don't have really old people then, you're not you're not in the geriatric wards. No, I don't work for elderly care, no. I've been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> Could be good fun. Well, we're almost coming up to time. Mm-hmm. Indeed, we are. So, do you, do you have any other questions for the team? Who, me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, put, put Willie on the spot as much as possible. Um, I'm not sure. Willie will answers all my questions when I speak to him. He um, bores my ear off with it all. So, but um, I try and answer or try and think of questions every time you come on. So, yeah, just like to thank you personally for for oh, joining in and putting comments in. It, it means a lot. To, That's right. Know, thank you. We know that the system is working. <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> You're doing a great job. And is that your your pooch? Is it? 
yes, Poppy. Oh. So I dare say she's got to be uh, taken for a walk fairly soon then. Um, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow now. I normally get my hu- stop it, Poppy. <laughs> normally I get my husband to do it, but he's away in the navy, so. All right. But he's on board ship, is he? Yeah, he's on um, defender. All oh, right. Ah. One of the defenders that are at, uh, one of the Type Forty Fives that are actually working, which is quite amazing. Yeah, most of them alongside being a refit, aren't they? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think there's only three that are currently working: Defender, yeah. Duncan, and Diamond. Yeah, so I guess that she's escorting um, Prince Wales. Uh, yeah, they're up in Norway. Yeah, that's not too bad this time of the year. I mean, be a bit chilly up there, but um, there's a big exercise goes on. Did it mm. myself a few times. Did yeah, Norway. you can keep up to date with it up on Twitter. That's what I do. All right. So if... they'll be back in a week or two, apparently. Um. My husband won't be, but I don't know about the other ships. Hmm. <laughs> Can't give too much away. No. <laughs> Top secret stuff. Top secret stuff. Eh? Top, Top spec secret. and all that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're nearly at time. So I think we ought to, to wind this, this session up. So are we going to be back on next week, guys? Yeah, that that worked for me. Um, what can we talk about it other than the sea? <laughs> yeah, I want Ed to know everything that you can about South Sea. I've been asking for weeks now. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll get the team working on a presentation on South Sea. I'll tell you what, here's a here's a little idea. How why doesn't Lana get something to give us a South Sea and she can give us a little bit of a chat about the history of South Sea and oh, what happened? Oh, there. I don't know about that, William. <laughs> That's an idea. No, that is a really good I'll tell you what, so next week. It, we won't. We won't be on here. It'll just be Lana, and she'll just be talking about Celsi. So stay tuned for that episode. Mm. Yeah, all right, William. We'll have words after, shall we? <laughs> Actually, while you're while you're walking and talking, you can make a few notes, take a few pictures of things. Yeah. Yeah. William, what you could do though, right, is the information about the um the stone that's got all the plaques and names on. You know which one I'm on about. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> you should do. <laughs> what stone with loads of plaques and names on it? Our granddad's name's on there. The War Memorial. On Spice Island. Oh no, that's um that's just um that's not war ones, that's just for um local local people, people who Yeah, but they there. might that's have nothing. history behind them, you don't know, you're just assuming. Mm. <laughs> don't assume. So we look into it. Well done. Right. So we're going to be back next week. We're going to have we're going to have a presentation of some sort on. By Lana. So, yeah, by Lana. Lana. <laughs> yes, by Lana. Lana. Sure it will be happy to contribute, but I'm sure that the guys have come up with a a full program for next week, full presentation of history around here somewhere. I'm sure there's something we could uh, have a chat with, and we'll see if we can get a special guest or two on. Oh yeah, so I've got some lined up, Tim. Excellent. So we'll um we'll do that for next week then. Brilliant. So in the well. meantime, I'll drop you guys down. Let's uh, pull you out of the shop. And just like to thank everybody that joined in this evening, everybody that uh, contributed. And everybody that gave us a click on the like button and the share button. So we'll be back the same time next week. That'll be uh, Sunday evening from 7 o'clock until 9 o'clock. The Portsmouth and Gosport History Group. And with luck, we'll have some presentations. We'll also have some, um, some special guests to talk about stuff. So in the meantime... Thank you for listening and watching and joining in. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share.